I'm opening? We have an eye, sort of a nostril, two teeth. Hmm. One of the teeth has a small cavity. Close call, folks, but I think we got here just in time. Presented by Maria Menounos and Kevin Undergaro. This is Anatomy of a Movie. In-depth discussions and breakdowns of various movie titles. And now that you've seen the movie, let the dissection begin. Hey everyone, I'm Kristen Carroll and welcome to a special edition of Anatomy of a Movie. Today we have John Jarrett with us, star of Wolf Creek 2 coming out. How are you doing, John? Oh, I'm doing good. How are you doing? Good. I'm so excited to see you. I just watched the movie on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And how was it going back to that character? Oh, it was a lot easier going back than it was doing it in the first place because mm -hmm. when I first did it, I, I had the funny voice and the, and the silly laugh. And, and a whole different look, too. When you came in the door, I was like, okay, you're not as scary as no, you are in that film at no. all. <laughs> Um, so I, I, the first time around when I did the first Wolf Creek, I didn't really know whether it was going to work or not because mm -hmm. a pretty brave character because he's a bit off the wall. And uh, well, he, I know he does work now yeah. and works really well. So the second time around, I was very comfortable because I knew that what I was doing was okay and uh, I could relax with it. And this, this story too, I mean, everything is based off of real events that happen. I think that's what makes this movie even scarier is that there's truth in them. And this time they took, you know, the two Germans and then the other Englishmen that mm. you end up kind of kidnapping for the, yeah. for the length of the movie. And um, it wasn't so much about them as it was about you finding all these different people on like the first film. Is that what drew you to come back? Because it was a different take on it. Um, well, it, we we I, I didn't didn't ever feel like I'd gone away because I worked very closely with the director on the on the Wolf Creek Two script. It's, mm -hmm. We're a bit of a team. The okay. Wolf Creek team works together, and so it's, it was more of a continuation than coming back. And um, it, uh, to me, the only difference with the Mick Taylor character is that he um, you see him for ninety percent of it. Mm -hmm. instead of 50% of it. And the first one, it was the waiting for the monster to come out of the cage. Exactly, the anticipation. But, but now the monster's out of the cage and he just goes burko for 90 minutes in Wolf Creek 2. And that opening scene, I mean, he's not even hiding it at night anymore. I mean, he is full in the daytime, just going after whoever he wants. Oh, no, no. <laughs> uh, in the first one, he... he he blew the girl yeah. away in in, in At the end, full yeah. daylight, but <laughs> yeah. uh, no, he doesn't wait for the night. Um, he, he doesn't care because the outback is a very lonely place. Yeah. <laughs> you can you can kill people day or night, and no one will know mm -hmm. um, because you know you're lucky to see a car every every hour out there. Mm -hmm. mm. How has it been for you? Because this is based on true events. When the movie came out, what kind of feedback have you been getting from it? Well, when we say. <clears throat> true events we use some of the techniques of some well-known serial killers in Australia mm -hmm. um, like the severing of the spine mm -hmm. is this guy called Ivan Malat who's a more of a an urban serial killer but my my character Mick is a fictitious character but he utilizes a, a few of the um, techniques of a couple of the mm -hmm. serial killers that are famous in Australia well, yeah, and some of the scenarios too. And I yeah. think, mm. have you ever been personally like lost in the outback when you've been back home? Um, no, no. I, I as a, as a kid, I, I was brought up out in the outback, mm -hmm. so I understand the place. Um, it's not new to me, so that's why I, I fit it into the character fairly well because I understand the, mm -hmm. the the people from out there and. Um, and he's Mick Taylor is actually an impersonation of my father, but my <laughs> father wasn't a psychopath. Or oh, a, he's, your dad's or, probably like what? Or a serial killer. <laughs> yeah. But um, he, but my dad just was very patriotic a, to Australia. Yeah, dad was a very, very big, larger than life, happy go lucky. Is is built like a brick. He's only five foot eight, but he's like huge, <laughs> five foot eight, uh, and. And everyone loved him, and he's very funny. <clears throat> so it's it's basically my dad with a little bit of uh, uh, 
a little bit of serial killer drizzled in and, and psychopath sort of <laughs> butted along the top. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because he is, um, Mick is such, I, I felt more connected to him in this you know, movie. And it's great because you're able to explore more of his side mm. and find out he is funny. And not only that, but the whole kind of more of the reason why he's doing this. I mean, obviously mm. he's, he's a psycho, but it goes deeper than that. He's trying well, you to get clean. to understand. Yeah. Because yeah. He, it, it's 90 minutes of Mick. But uh, when you look at the first one, it's, it's, it's kind of a compacted version of the, of the, this one mm -hmm. really is the way that I see it. Um, and you get to learn a lot more about him because he's there for the entire film. But uh, in the first one, um, he played games with them and he captured them and mm -hmm. and then he chased them and the car went over his, his car went over his pickup went over a cliff and then he got in a big V eight car and chased yeah. them. <laughs> so it's like a compacted version of of the one that's out now, mm -hmm. uh, and so it's bigger and brighter and and there's a lot more going on um, because there's more time and more room for it. Mm -hmm. And so it's more of a chase film this time around, and we use big trucks and you know, like <laughs> Kenworths go crashing down the hill. It's not there's no computer graphics in it. I was it's just going to ask, camera. like, how much was CGI? All in camera. Oh, the only th CGI thing was the kangaroos that we ran into. Uh, yeah, no kangaroos were kangaroos were harmed during the. No, time, right? no. that's good. That's good. No, not on camera. No. no. Yeah, I, that that scene, I was like, "Oh my god, how can they do but that?" But that happens all this time in Australia. That that's not really Australians that's will see out, that and yeah. they won't say, "Oh, that's that's the work of a serial killer," because no. most people who drive in the um, in the outback run into a kangaroo somewhere along the line. If you ever go to Australia <clears throat> and you drive around mm -hmm. uh, in the outback, there's there's dead kangaroos all over the place oh. that cars and trucks run yeah. into because they got very bad road sense and they're a night animal and they hop out in front of you and you go bang yeah. well and such b big creatures as well yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> they wreck the front of your car pretty well how does it work for you with with stunts then because yeah when the cars roll over or even like chasing after them this time in the movie you know you got smacked with a hammer at one point how how is it working on those types of scenes well get the, the, the getting <laughs> smacked with a hammer um i'm nearly 62 Right, so I'm no kid anymore. Uh, I stay fit and all that, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I had to fall on the ground about eight times, and it was in a studio that, and it had about that much sand, oh. and under the two inches of sand was concrete. So I threw myself on that about seven or eight times, but I, I still get up without having to go to the chiropractor, so I'm mm. doing okay for an old bloke. Do they have a stand-in for you for any no. of the scenes? No, you just do all your own no, stuff? No, I don't like stand-ins. I like that about this film, too, because it does seem so authentic, and you even said, you know, there's not a lot of CGI, so it does create a more horror aspect than, mm. than some of the other movies as well, just even, yeah. uh, you know, certain... <laughs> well, I admire people shooting movies on in camera. I mean, Tarantino shoots everything in mm -hmm. camera. He, he, he tries not to have any CGI. He's which is old school and that's the way you used to make movies. And I, I think because of that, it's more exciting because it's tangible and, and, it, and it's real. And no matter how good you are, some, the, the computer stuff, there's something that's not exactly three-dimensional about it, mm -hmm. I, I think. So the more you can put in camera, the better. Oh, and Tarantino, too, working on some of his films, and he even said you're one of the best actors out there, mm. you know, do you take that with you when you go to this set or when you're, you know, kind of uh, creating this film as well? You're like, do you take in his lessons to filmmaking? Uh, Quinn's lessons? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm 12 years old than him. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, no. he takes lessons from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he took, uh, he took Australian accent lessons in, in Django. <laughs> um, no, no he's, he's amazing. I'm just joking. He's, he's amazing. <laughs> he's, he's a genius. Um, very, very clever man um so no i i i enjoyed working with him but i i think i've been around too long to be learning too much mm -hmm. from anyone else anymore 
Yeah. <laughs> I think I got myself pretty well worked out. What's something that stood with you that, that you take with to each film that and a lesson or something that, you know, a newer person should know? Oh, that all of, uh, probably as other actors would want to know, um, or younger actors, I, I just, the big thing I take with me to every film is a uh, backstory. You know, I, mm-hmm. I have a very strong backstory. I uh, go from when the character was born right through to what I call page zero, which is just before before page one of the script. Mm-hmm. So that when I walk onto the set for the first day, I know exactly who the hell I am, you know? Mm-hmm. And then when I work out the, the backstory of the character, then I say, okay, how much of John Jarrett is part of that? So I can make it more truthful. Mm-hmm. So that's why I chose my dad for Mick Taylor because I can I know who he is really well and I can relate to him very well. Is it better for you to create the the backstory yourself or do you usually talk to the director or the writer of a film or No, no, I do it myself. Yeah. yeah. Um because then I own it. Uh it's not much use getting a backstory from somebody mm-hmm. who's not playing the character. And um yeah, when I was a young guy, sure, mm-hmm. you know, I I worked with Peter Weir on Picnic at Hanging Rock, which was my second film back in 1974. Mm-hmm. So I had a lot to learn then, but not not now. I, I kind of worked out mm-hmm. what, I, what I'm supposed to do and how to do it. And I, I have, um, you know, I have a routine that I uh, work with. And I work with directors um, these days. Um, when you're younger, you work for them because you can learn a lot from them, you mm-hmm. know. But you get to a stage where where it's like like football or something. You, you just know the moves. Yeah, it's more collaborative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With, um, with Mick's backstory <clears throat> as well, we do find out part of the reason he's doing this is because he's very patriotic to Australia and all of his victims mm-hmm. aren't from there. Um, what is something, you know, from Australia, you know, as an American that I should know going into there? Um, I'm not sure what you mean. Um, In what Like respect? what's something... Um, like if I was going, you know, what what makes, I guess, kind of Australia unique in a sense to you right. or, to, or to Mick? Like why doesn't he want these outsiders there? Oh, why doesn't Mick want outsiders? Um, because it's it's like they, they're coming onto his turf mm-hmm. and they're, they're kind of city, hippie, um, weak youth that he he doesn't like from other countries, um, you know. So there was just justification, you know. Just the same as Ku Klux Klansmen justified the fact that they um, murdered African Americans because they decided that they were less than mm-hmm. they were, and all of that idiotic nonsense. It's the same for um, he just built it for up. Mick. Mm-hmm. He he he's he's worked out and justified. To himself why this is okay mm-hmm. you know but it's not okay you know? no, no not at all <laughs> it's not okay <laughs> but, that, but right through Jeff, since the beginning of time that's been happening you know and, and I think that's what H- makes Hitler, his... Hitler did it with an entire nation that's know? what I think connects you to this kind of horror movie because he is somebody that we've seen in the past do you find that um, when you're playing him that um, you know that you kind of understand him in a weird sense. I mean, you're not going to go out and do anything like that, mm. of course, but just... Yeah, I... I um, Because you play him so real. I, I don't understand it, <laughs> yeah. but I've figured out kind of why, I suppose. Mm-hmm. It's really difficult to answer that question. Um, it's, it's a very... Da- well, he's got a very dark side that I haven't got, you know, mm-hmm. um, and that's understanding to people who have got that sort of evil streak about them. Mm-hmm. But so I've got to try and understand how they think, which is, I suppose it's just um, a, a weakness in, in, in the human um, makeup mm-hmm. is, is what these people are because uh, I can't see any other reason as to why, you know, pedophiles and rapists and murderers exist, mm-hmm. only that they haven't got enough um, backbone to not do those kind of things, you know, and they mm-hmm. just, um, m- their conscience must be 
They must. They don't have a conscience, obviously. Mm-hmm. I, I don't really understand them. <laughs> I don't. But <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I, don't, I look. I, I, I know. I kind of understand. Like um, my son Charlie is is who I I love more than anything in the world. You know, I love all my children. But he was a hard one. He was a tough bastard to bring up. You know, <laughs> and there's times when he was driving me crazy and. I wanted to pick him up and slam him against the wall and belt him, mm-hmm. but I didn't. Yeah, I never hit him in my life, but I, I've had flashes where I'd like to just <laughs> bang him, you know. Well, it's like when you're driving on the but, uh, 405 getting here. Yeah, it's just sp- like, man, yeah, I yeah, just want to. That's you know. right. But <laughs> some people do can do act on it. They do pick their kids up and slam them, you mm-hmm. know. So I suppose that's what these people are. They're people who just don't know how to control themselves. Mm-hmm. Is um so have your kids all seen the Wolf Creek movie? My adult kids have. Your adult kids. Yeah. I've got six kids, so yeah, I got. What's a, the youngest? Ten. Okay, so yeah, not not old enough to see the. I film got a yet. ten and a twelve year old, a twenty and twenty six, twenty eight and thirty six. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Nicely spread. Yeah, and you I don't, you don't want the the younger kids to see you know daddy doing that. <laughs> no, well. they want to. They, they want they, to. <laughs> They say, <laughs> I go out with them, do you know who this is? This is my dad. He's in Wolf Creek. It's scary. But they've never seen it. You know. So if you get with any of the daughters, if they have a boyfriend over, you're like, you know who I am. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, that, no, none, none of that's happened. But my daughters were very um, disturbed by it. Mm-hmm. Um, but my son thought it was cool. <laughs> Um, I actually read somewhere you're not a huge horror movie fan, correct? No. Yeah. No. So do you go into, because this is considered a horror genre, do you go into this with a different outlook in it when you're creating it? No. No, it's just um, I'm playing a serial killer. Um, and so I, I, I just live for the next good script. That's I don't care what genre it is. It's, mm-hmm. You know, someone hands me a script and says, would you like to do this? I read it. And uh, if I really like it and I want to play the part, I'll I'll do it. Mm-hmm. So I don't really look for anything. No, I've never been a huge horror fan. I uh, I like, but I, li- I like um, well, I like the Wolf Creek kind of horror because it can happen, and that that's mm-hmm. that's very scary and very interesting. Like I like I love Cape Fear. I like Psycho, mm-hmm. but Freddy Krueger and all of those they it's alien not, not do, yeah. doesn't do it for me, you know. Um, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I, I, Something based I like more all... in reality, grounded in reality. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't mind that. Mm. Yeah. For, and so for this film, too, um, you have so many young actors that you're working at, with. Mm. Um, is it kind of a, a lighter feel on the set compared to what the film is? Do, you, do they play pranks on anybody or is any uh, kind of... No, be, uh, because... I'm the I'm the one that plays all the pranks and <laughs> and slaps people around and has a good time because my character's having the time of his life. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, they have to stay fairly well in their zone, which is completely freaked out and and people like Ryan Core, um, you know, trying to feel extremely vulnerable and um mm-hmm. on, and on the edge of um being killed. Yeah. So. There's not a lot of room for them to lighten up. Joke around, yeah. Yeah. What you said, you joke around on set. What's a what's a funny story you can share with us? Oh, that stands out. I, I th- things like um, there's a couple I can't share with. <laughs> um, there's things like um, throwing fingers in, you know, <laughs> and trying to, and everyone, no, let me, and you roll them in, and they look funny, and. They, and rubber fingers, you know, covered in blood. Mm-hmm. And then everyone has a go. Oh, no, let, let me have a go. And, and it's like bowling. And yeah, that's it. Oh, oh great. No, no, let me have a go. Bowling <laughs> with fingers. Yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of macabre. You're there throwing fingers in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, sort of nonsense. Do you kind of stay in character sometimes on set? And that's what I, I would do. I'd kind mm, of like sneak up on people when I'm in character. You know. Well, in the first one, I, I, I played with the... Um, actors a lot more um and i'd go up to i i I stay fairly well clear of the actors and uh, don't have a lot to do with them i I like to bash them up um (laughs) the the boys um 
and which is good because they're like Ryan's only twenty three and I'm I'm sixty odd, mm-hmm. and I can still beat him, you know. And I I kind of like that. I yeah. like to let him know that he can't break beat him me. in. Let yeah, him know. because he's a fairly slim kid, and um, you know. I'll get my comeuppance and I'll cast Hugh Jackman opposite me one day, and then I'll then I'll be scared. But um, yeah, so the the first time around, I, I said to the the young actors, I walked up to them and I said, oh, I've been seeing the dailies, and um, oh, you you're doing a great job, and you know you look all, all look so young and fresh and full of life, and I just think veal. <laughs> and then I walk away, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> just like your dinner for me. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I know, and Jono asked me, um, did I stay in character? And so I, I shirt fronted him and slapped him around and threw him about and and did a mick on him. <laughs> so, and he wrote about that and he was genuinely freaked out. <laughs> so, yeah, I do stay loosely within the realms of mick, but I don't kill any people. Now, Mick, as well, we get to hear his uh, pipes in this this film. He's not a very good singer, is he? <laughs> I thought it was fun. It was kind of, I felt like I was at a like a bar singing or something, you know. Yeah, Tommy yeah. Kangaroo Dance. Tommy Kangaroo Dance one, yeah. <laughs> so do you do you sing in real life? Do you? Yeah, I sing a lot better than Mick. Yeah. <laughs> What's your song well, of choice? Sp- hmm? What's your song of choice? Oh, my, my, or band. My, my favorite. Oh, my, ba- uh, you know, I'm, I'm old, you know, so I like the Stones and... I like all the, I like um, the Beatles. I like all of those kinds of guys. Um, the the great old rock and rollers and mm-hmm. you know, Robert Plant. You now, know. now you've been in here the business for a while. Who haven't you worked with that you would love to? Um, oh, I'd like to work with De Niro. That would yeah. be good. Yeah, because uh, I find him interesting. And such a, I mean, such a wide range of everything too. So it'd be fun to see how, you know, what kind of a yeah. film you play. Yeah, I don't know, but uh, no, he, he's a really good actor. He does, he, he does the Bronx all the time. Though. I see. <laughs> he's usually a gangster or a guy from the Bronx, but um, no, he, he's very interesting. I'd like to work with him. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's a lot of actors I'd like to work with. I love Johnny Depp. I think he'd be good to work with because <laughs> he's so off the wall. No, it's a wonderful actor that I'd love love to work with, yeah, mm-hmm. given the opportunity. Now, um, I'll do a quick spoiler alert um, okay. for anybody who hasn't seen the movie yet. Um, so earmuffs if you have it. Spoiler but, alert, spoiler um, alert. Can we see, do you think there'll be a Wolf Creek 3? I mean, it leaves it open-ended to that. Well, if you people out there watching this <laughs> try to buy the movie, you know, VOD, buy it, and not download it and pirate it. <laughs> yeah, we might make a profit out of the movie that mm-hmm. way. Um, but so if the if the film does well, um, we'll do another one. But mm-hmm. if everyone continues this pirate business, well, it's just killing the film industry. Very independent yeah. films anyway. So that that's just got to stop. That's how they make their money. Yeah, it's got to stop because um, you you want to watch the movies, but you're inadvertently killing the industry off mm-hmm. and you just be stuck with you know uh, big Hollywood blockbusters and films like mine won't yeah. be made anymore if it keeps up I mean if you could download a, a new BMW they'd soon stop it wouldn't they yeah exactly mm. I'm waiting so, for that, that actually <laughs> I'll buy a movie like <laughs> that's fine but if there was a BMW I could download, download yeah. I might have to do it John mm. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie yeah so if we're successful um mm. So is it something we'll you've kind of already talked about? Oh yeah, of course, of course. So the different different mm. ways that we could learn more about Mick too, because he is such a mm. fascinating character, and yeah. he's all alone out there. I feel like at some point mm. somebody has to know him. Yeah, <laughs> well, I just don't. I don't think he ever. He never loses, and he never dies. I don't mm-hmm. think. <laughs> he's like Pepe Le Pew. He just keeps turning up. So I never run and I never yell. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much, John. I appreciate you being here. It's so I was so excited. I love the movie. I did. I watched it Sunday, and I just sat there, like hiding behind my pillow for half of it too. It really Excellent. kept me on the edge of mm. my seat. And I love horror movies. So yeah, I was hoping it's I'm, got good laughs in it too, isn't it? It does. <laughs> it's and a I, comedy horror. The whole time I was watching too, I go to Universal Horror Nights at, um, down in Hollywood every mm. year, and I was like, 
man, they should do Wolf Creek for one of the mazes. Yeah, they just, should. Yeah, have Mick come out and scare people. Mm, push it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it for being here. And you guys have to check out Wolf Creek 2. It comes out very soon, right? Is it oh, it's at, at it's Australia. At, different I, AMC than us. Burbank on the 16th. On the 16th. In the cinema, if you want a cinema experience. I definitely recommend that. I mean, I watched it at my house, but I think I would have been even more freaked it's out in the theater great, in the dark. And, right in the big screen. Yeah. So thank you so much, John, for being here. And I'm Kristen Carroll for Anatomy of a Movie. See you guys later. From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the rest of the Anatomy of a Movie staff, we would like to thank you for listening and subscribing to the show. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to email or tweet us. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been Anatomy of a Movie. Thanks for watching Anatomy of a Movie on YouTube. For more on your favorite movies, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to let us know what you think in our comment section below here. Bye. I understand the place. Um, it's not new to me, so that's why I, I fit it into the character fairly well, because I understand the, mm -hmm. the, the people from out there. And... Um, and he's, Mick Taylor is actually an impersonation of my father. But my f <laughs> father wasn't a psychopath. Or uh, he's, your dad's or, probably like, what? Or a serial killer. <laughs> yeah. But um, he, but my dad Just was... Just very patriotic a, to Australia. Yeah, dad was a very, very big, larger than life, happy-go-lucky. He's, he's built like a brick. He's only five foot eight, but he's like huge, <laughs> five foot eight. Uh, and... And everyone loved him, and he's very funny. <clears throat> so it's it's basically my dad with a little bit of uh, uh, a little bit of serial killer drizzled in, and and psychopath sort of <laughs> butted along the top. <laughs> <laughs> because he is um, make us such. Um, well, it. We we I, I didn't didn't ever feel like I'd gone away because I worked very closely with the director on the on the Wolf Creek Two script. It's, mm -hmm. We're a bit of a team. The Wolf okay. Creek team works together, and so it's, it was more of a continuation than coming back. And um, I, I, to me, the only difference with the Mick Taylor character is that he um, you see him for ninety percent of it. Mm -hmm. instead of 50% of it. And the first one, it was the waiting for the monster to come out of the cage. Exactly, the anticipation. But, but now the monster's out of the cage and he just goes burko for 90 minutes in Wolf Creek 2. And that opening scene, I mean, he's not even hiding it at night anymore. I mean, he is full in the daytime, just going after whoever he wants. Oh, no, no. <laughs> uh, in the first one, he... he he blew the girl yeah. away in, in, in At the end, full yeah. daylight. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, no, he doesn't wait for the night. Um, he, he doesn't care because the outback is a very lonely place. Yeah. I'm opening. We have an eye, sort of a nostril, two teeth. Hmm. One of the teeth has a small cavity. Close call, folks, but I think we got here just in time. Presented by Maria Menounos and Kevin Undergaro. This is Anatomy of a Movie. In-depth discussions and breakdowns of various movie titles. And now that you've seen the movie, let the dissection begin. Hey everyone, I'm Kristen Carroll and welcome to a special edition of Anatomy of a Movie. Today we have John Jarrett with us, star of Wolf Creek 2 coming out. How are you doing, John? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Good. I'm so excited to see you. I just watched the movie on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And how was it going back to that character? Oh, it was a lot easier going back than it was doing it in the first place because mm -hmm. you can you can kill people day or night and no one will know mm -hmm. um, because, you know, you're lucky to see a car every, every hour out there. Mm-hmm. Mm. How has it been for you? Because this is based on true events. When the movie came out, what kind of feedback have you been getting from it? Well, when we say <clears throat> true events, we use some of the techniques of 
some well-known serial killers in Australia, mm -hmm. um, like the severing of the spine is mm -hmm. this guy called Ivan Malat, who is a more of a an urban serial killer. But my my character Mick is a fictitious character, but he utilizes a a few of the um, techniques of a couple of the mm -hmm. serial killers that are famous in Australia. Well, yeah, and some of the mm. scenarios too. And I yeah. think, mm. have you ever been personally like lost in the outback when you've been back home? Um, no, no. I, I as a, as a kid, I was, I was brought up out in the outback. Mm -hmm. So I, when I first did it, I, I had the funny voice and the, and the silly laugh and. And a whole different look too. When you came in the door, I was like, "Okay, you're not as scary as no, you are in that film no. at all." Um, so I, I, the first time around when I did the first Wolf Creek, I didn't really know whether it's going to work or not because mm -hmm. a pretty brave character because he's a bit off the wall. And uh, well, he, I know he does work now yeah. and works really well. So the second time around, I was very comfortable because I knew that what I was doing was okay and uh, I could relax with it. And this this story too, I mean, everything is based off of real events that happen. I think that's what makes this movie even scarier is that there's truth in them. And this time they took, you know, the two Germans and then the other Englishmen that mm. you end up kind of kidnapping for the, yeah. for the length of the movie. And um, it wasn't so much about them as it was about you finding all these different people, unlike the first film. Is that what drew you to come back? Because it was a different take on it. 